Hey there, comic fans. Another week with no new comic books. But I did get a new front brake for my bicycle. I'll be putting that on sooner or later. <laughs> I actually had to... My old front brake has been broken for so long. Uh, I, it still worked in an emergency, but um, I ride during the winter. So a lot of the bad weather gets to it. And I, I could make the brake stop the bike, but then I had to reach down and pull it apart by hands because it wouldn't, wouldn't come apart anymore. So I finally ordered, and, I, and it, it's been doing that for five years. I never wanted to fix it totally because I knew I'd have to see this little bolt right here. That, that goes into the fork. And mine was just rusted and frozen in there. So I knew I had to break the whole thing out. And I did, but part of it got left behind. And now I have to drill it out. And I don't have the right size drill bit. So I had to order a drill. And But anyway, there's a little bike update for you. <laughs> Meanwhile, what comics have I been reading? Oh, I re I f last week I mentioned I, found I read Local in um, Asterios Polyp. Local by Ryan Kelly and Brian Wood. Really good. I haven't read it since it first came out in like 2012 or something. I really enjoyed it. And Asterius Polyp by David Mazzucchelli, which I think came out in, back in 2009. And I liked it better reading it this time. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if it was because back in 2009, I was younger than the protagonist who had just turned 50. And now I'm older than the protagonist, so it's like I've got, I had two different perspectives on that story, uh, but I really, really enjoyed it uh, this time around. I might write a review of it for my blog. I wrote a review of it back in 2009, which I read before I read the book. I reread it. Now I want to write a new review of it, just because like I said, I really enjoyed it even more this time around, what is it, 11 years later, so. And speaking of reading, reading again, I'm going to... I'm going to be making my way through Uber, Volume 1, which I read digitally a few years ago. Then I think I showed these off. I got these maybe in the winter, the beginning of the winter, and I started reading. I think I read the first six issues. And then when I started going to the library, getting all those books I've been showing you all winter and spring, well, not, not since it closed, but... Uh, I, I, I kind of got off of Uber since I was reading all those library books. Now I'm going to dive back into it. It's what, 30 issues, I think, volume one is. I can't even remember. But uh, gonna going to read them all and enjoy them. And the other thing I'm, I got um, on my reading list for this week is, I showed this off to you. I got it around Christmas time. It's a box set of Neat Stuff, volume one and two. This is the Peter Bag magazine. Oh, there's some nice covers. That uh, Hate and Buddy Bradley and the Bradleys already came from. And it's got lots of other stuff in it. Oh, this is... I think this is volume two. I gotta pull volume one off the shelf. No, this is book one. I just saw it had uh, the covers to... Because this is the cover to, I think, one of the later issues. Maybe it just has all the covers at the beginning. But really nice stuff. You must, man, I'm digging these covers. This is where I first ran into, um, first ran into Peter Bagg's work, but I didn't buy all of these original the first time around. It's in black and white. I got the very first issue. I think I got a couple afterwards, but it wasn't until the end. This went up to issue 15. I think I started buying it. I had heard that the bradley stuff and it was really good i remember because it was an anthology of his stuff and i liked some of it and didn't like others of it and i think i was away at college at the time too so uh i didn't get it all but i started picking it up near the, the very end of its run i may have put it on my poll list with the last issue i think I, I have a memory of that where i i, I think i got the last couple of issues and then i finally went like yeah i remember getting 13 off the stands and i may have just put it on my pull list with 13 and then this is four and then 15 was the last one so or i may have bought like 13 and 14 off the stands and said put it on my pull list and then 15 came out and i was like this is the last issue i was like oh well then i said put hate on my pull list so i got all the issues of hate right away 
because I had just uh, started. There's stuff in here like, whoa, I have, a, I have, I have some of the um, trade paperbacks of stuff collected in here. Studs Kirby is really good. You have one called Junior and Other Losers. And the Bradley's trade paperback all comes from these. But now, now we've got a chance to read all of it. Like, that's girly girl. I don't remember her at all. I don't remember liking that strip. Um, but we'll see. I'll, I'll enjoy... Uh, oh, look at that. It's got lots of teeny tiny strips in there, too. Like I said, it was a variety of stuff from Peter Bag and neat stuff. So we'll give that a look. Now let me show you something from my original art collection. This is, let's pull it out of this mylar so you can see it without the glare. This is just a page back in, like, I haven't gotten any, you know, I haven't bought any in a while, but I used to just buy pages off of eBay that I could find for cheap. And this is, you know, I like that. That's Grifter right there. This is uh, Grifter, I don't know what volume number this is. Issue 9, page 15, by Michael Ryan and Jason Good. And I got this, um, I, I, I printed out the receipt. Of, I wish I'd done that for all the stuff I'd gotten off of eBay like this, but I only did it for some of it. It's like I got this on April 20th, 2014, and the, the, the total was $37. It was $25 for the page and $12 shipping. Lettering right on the page of this one. So it must have been before digital lettering. But it's like, you know, 40 bucks for a page of comic book art? That's crazy cheap. I don't even care. You know, I never... I always enjoyed Grifter in um, Wildcats. I think I had a couple Grifter comic books here and there, but not a ton. But for, you know, you a page of comic book art for 40 bucks is absurdly cheap no matter what the page is. I mean, look at all the wonderful work that's in there. That's just... That's just crazy dirt cheap. Um, so, you know, just just a random page. You know, my, my collection isn't filled with, you know, $20,000 Jack Kirby pages. I got $40 Grifter pages. But I like them. <laughs> so what the heck? Now let me show you... Uh, some of my artwork that I got behind me. If you notice, there's no giant white drawing board behind it. That's because um, instead of... Uh, uh, I got tired of making these big ink drawings, so I decided to do a paint. This is the last of the big ink drawings. I, I This is the last one I did from just last week. And usually when you see these, there's a big white drawing board right there. But now you can see there's nothing because my, my painting, you know, the canvas sits right up against there that I'm working on now. Because I wanted to work in some color, but this is the last of the black and white ones. And this is another my, of my uh, um, photos of sort of the dream world. The, these, um, the name of this one is Hidden Patch. And, and, and these people over here are uh, denizens of the dream world who are not too sociable. They're the ones who, they don't like people. They don't like people. They don't like... Um, people hanging around they don't like to see people they hang out in their own little patch of the dream world that's all fractured they hide out in little spots and they don't want anything to do with you you come in you come walking into the dream world they want you to get out that's who they are they're the people of the hidden patch and they don't want anything to do with the other people of the dream world they don't want anything to do with us who wander into the dream world they just want to be left alone to their own whatever they got going on in their head so there you go matter of fact next week i'll show you the uh painting i'm working on once i finish it like i said i'm i'm still working on it then maybe i'll get back to one of these it's funny that the painting i'm working on is an 18 by 24 canvas and it seems so small after this is um 22 by 30 inches so 18 by 24 is about that big you know so it seems so small after working on this one i gotta get some bigger canvases to work on but they take up a lot of room anyway you guys all have a good week out there